Pokemon card breaks, uh, Pokemon pack openings, whatever you want to call them, I would say the overwhelming majority of content creators that are opening uh, packs of Pokemon cards are doing so in a way that puts in an in inordinate, if not in some cases exclusive focus on the uh, perceived market value of the cards being opened. Uh, to wit, uh, whether it's directly just going right to the quote-unquote expensive or good cards in a pack or doing a, a little uh, routine where they go through card to card to build suspense to get to the end of a pack. Uh, and there would be varying degrees of hysteria if a very expensive or valuable card was pulled. Um I think that I think that this isn't really great for Pokemon and for people in general. Um, I know a lot of people who are very, very, uh, very hardcore fans of Pokemon who love po all things Pokemon, the movies, the TV shows, the video games, the trading card game, and this is not in any way, shape, or form a takedown or a criticism or any any kind of negative energy towards the the legitimately amazing Pokemon community. I'm talking specifically about how I'm troubled by uh, pack opening videos on YouTube because uh, these 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 pieces of content to me watching is someone who is not unfamiliar with Pokemon, but is also not like a hardcore fan. I'd say I'm kind of a neutral observer. Uh, it seems like these videos do nothing more but then to glorify uh, or or present Pokemon cards as a financial instrument. And when you look at that in terms of you are taking a risk by buying a pack or maybe a box of packs or maybe a case of boxes of packs uh, in, the, in the hopes of opening them and getting lots of costly, uh, expensive cards, you're effectively gambling. And that's where now, this is where we get into the part where I say it's very controversial or taboo because now I'm saying the part out loud that I think a lot of people are very uncomfortable hearing that uh, there's a lot of the Pokemon community, the content community, which is kind of debased de Pokemon into a form of gambling. And look, my point here is not to be like super preachy, Doug, but let's be honest. Again, let's 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 face this with just honesty and not sugarcoat anything. Um, Pokemon is largely a very younger audience. It's buying these packs, it's opening them, and it's hoping for the best, and it's being trained and conditioned by content creators that open Pokemon cards. That the goal isn't to have an affection or love for Pokemon or the game, it's to see how much money you might be able to make. Because all these videos I see, when a big important card comes up, the first thing I see is a dollar value. PSA 10, you know, reverse hypnotic... Uh, ancient Bulbasaur, $2,600. And I just feel like you're training the audience, especially the younger, more impressionable audience, that that's what Pokemon is all about. It's like legalized scratch-off tickets for children. Again, I know, I know, this is very difficult to hear. I know there's going to be a lot of pushback on this. But I also think this is not an unfair point, and I'm calling it like I see it. Um, I think that you are you are contributing to an unhealthy approach to the Pokemon, enjoying the Pokemon hobby and the Pokemon world. I think that there's a reason why we saw people fighting each other over Pokemon cards. We still, to, in some cases, see people uh, getting up to the point of, you know, uh, crossing blows with each other or, or coming to blows, I should say, uh, in an attempt to purchase Pokemon boxes and, and packs of these things uh, because there's this sense that it's, it's I, I'm not going to say a get rich quick scheme, but an opportunity to, uh, to, well, get rich quick. I guess maybe that is what I'm saying. Um, those of us, of course, who have really, you know, taken the time and taken emotional off the table and looked at it, realize that this is not, in fact, 
a practical or reasonable way to make money. Uh, and when you think about this, the average value of cards you're going to pull out of any given Pokemon box are almost always never going to uh, be greater than what you put in. Obviously, the rare cards are rare for a reason, um, and your expected return or your expected value, uh, when you factor in not just the cost of the box and the value of the cards, but things that are not you know reinforced and talked about by these same content creators the cost of getting cards graded the cost of handling them the cost of your time if you're going to sell them listing them somewhere or facilitating that transaction the fact is your time is worth something no matter what you might think or what may people want you to think uh, so economically this is not really a viable thing but the people that romanticize breaking these packs and getting excited and hysterical when they get an expensive card aren't exactly giving you the full story here and perhaps filling people people with, uh, again, visions of success that they're unlikely to attain. Uh, look, again, here's the reality on the ground. This is the kind of thing that will manifest itself uh, later in life to folks having gambling problems. I would not surprise me if we find out 10, 20 years down the road that folks that were raised on these content creators ended up with big markers at casinos or so on and so forth, and, and quite frankly, potentially tragedies happening. Um, I don't think that this is healthy for Pokemon. I think that it can be acknowledged that there's a market for rare Pokemon cards. I think you can certainly acknowledge that some of these uh, are sold for quite a bit of money. But I don't think it's necessary uh, if you're doing content where you're opening Pokemon packs to focus exclusively on the financial aspect of this. And I would like to suggest that if there are content creators or fans of this content uh, that don't agree with me, well, I say, here's the battle plan. You can easily prove me wrong here. If you're a content creator that opens Pokemon packs, here's my challenge. Take the, take the dollar values off your videos. Uh, you can certainly celebrate when you get a rare card. There's nothing wrong with that. You, it's certainly good to celebrate if you find a holographic card or a full art card or some special type of card. It's great. Celebrate all you like. But my challenge to you is, can you do the video without talking about the dollar amounts? Would you be concerned that maybe you wouldn't have as many people watching? Uh, if you think that those things are true, I think you have to reassess the ramifications of the content you're making because like, at the end of the day, you're basically leaning on people's urges, their greed, their, uh, you know, their, their ability to, to fall into gambling type behavior uh, more so than just celebrating Pokemon itself. Uh, that's my thought about this. Um, I've seen it more and more uh, over the last set of years. Um, I find it to be a bit disconcerting. Um, is someone uh, who has had friends and has seen people who have uh, fallen into bad places, uh, losing control of the urge to make unreasonable risks financially. Um, so I just, uh, I'm, I'm coming at this from an honest place and coming at this from trying to just ask people to think twice about what they're doing and maybe rethink uh, the approach to this content. And, and maybe, you know, I would say that, you know, those out there who are genuinely uh, great people in the Pokemon community, uh, maybe they should consider pushing back a little as well. Maybe saying, hey, you know, can we get this these card breaks, this content, with a little less emphasis on the money and a little more emphasis on the love for Pokemon? I don't think that would hurt anything. Uh, but, you know, again, it's just I'm one voice, and I'm very curious to see what you have to say on the subject. As always, thank you so much for watching my stuff. Please consider liking and subscribing if you like the cut of my jib. Uh, I'll see you next time on Solid Legging Games.